Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Ali Halatay from KNT University and this video is all about simulation of uh, egg hatching incubator using Simulink and Simscape. This video is recorded for the final project of the Mechatronics course. So let's jump to the contents we will see in this video. First I will talk about what are hatching stages and how a yolk becomes a chicken. After that, we'll see what environment conditions actually the mother chicken provide for this egg to become a chicken and how we should uh, simulate this. After that, we'll see what simplification assumptions we need for the simulation. Uh, for the next topic, I will talk about design and dimensions for the actual incubator we're talking about uh, and what materials we will use and what are the height the volume or and some information about this that we will use in the simulink after that i will talk about how we can see the heat transfer uh, problem here because the main issue is the heat transfer we should consider after that actually we'll see the implementation implementation details on simulink and finally, I will show you the results of the simulation and some other variations that I think it's useful to know about this uh, incubator. As you can see in this picture, it took about 21 days from the yolk to the final living breathing chicken. And I think it's a really beautiful process. It's really amazing because uh, as you know, the egg is some sort of isolated system and it's separated from the mother's body and all the mother does is just keep it warm I think and at the end uh, it will be a living creature and I think it's really beautiful so let's jump to the conditions that this mother provide for the egg as I mentioned before, we need to control two parameters here, one temperature and another humidity. As you can see in this table, based on the days has been passed from today's zero, we need uh, always the constant temperature of 37.5 degrees Celsius and the ranges of humidity is about for the first 18 days is about 40 to 50 percent and for the last three days we need some more humidity because uh, the chicken is going out of the shell and uh, it needs to be soft so it's we need to uh, humidity to be about 60 to 75 percent and I need to mention about two more conditions here uh, one is air circulation because as you know the egg is actually breathing so it needs to have fresh air and oxygen consistently and another condition we, we might consider is about rotation of the egg because uh, we need to rotate it periodically and the yolk should be always at the center of the egg so it become easier for the chicken to grow so let's talk about what simplification assumptions we need to consider here so that our simulation would be as simple as possible also not so far from reality uh, first we need to consider that environment has a steady moisture properties which means that pressure temperature and the humidity of the environment are all consistent during these 21 days of hatching after that i need to mention something important here the rotation of the egg is crucial and important part of the process but uh, it's such a simple thing so we need to simulate it here so we omit this part from our simulation after that uh, we need to consider that our heating element is ideal and generate constant flow when it's turned on and uh, finally we have some sort of heat transfer with the environment that i will uh, talk about 
in details later in this video. What we are going to do is to simulate some sort of non-industrial incubator which means that our simulation would be something like this picture. We have two set points for two main parameters temperature and humidity and uh, our incubator would uh, contains around 20 to 30 eggs per load uh, and I'm going to show you the simple model of uh, the process we have a uh, heater element water and uh, some sort of fan that which blows air into the environment and provide oxygen also we have motor for rotating the eggs periodically but we don't implement it in our simulation as I mentioned before and uh, finally we have heat transfer with the environment and also we need to know the exact dimensions uh, volume and the area of the heat transfer so uh, I assume that we have uh, a cube with these uh, dimensions here and also uh, we use 4 millimeter thick glass for uh, making this incubator before uh, we're going to see the actual implementation of this uh, simulation inside Simulink, I would like to briefly talk about how we should look to his heat transfer problem here. Uh, as you may guess yet, we have two main uh, source of heat transfer here, one between uh, the heater and the uh, volume inside of the incubator, and another one is between the environment and the walls of the incubator. So uh, for the first case, it's only just simple convection because uh, the heater is in the touch of the air directly. And we uh, assume that there's no other types of heat transfer there. And also for the second case, we can consider uh, two types of heat transfer here. Uh, I mean, there's actually one type, but uh, two uh, separate steps. One, convection uh, from inside, then convection inside the glass itself, and another convection, convection from the glass walls through the inside volume. So when we are going to implement it inside the Simulink, it's important to know uh, what thermal resistance we should add, something like the uh, thermal mass of glass, these uh, numbers are important, so we need to have uh, a big picture of what we are going to do. So that's it for the introduction, so let's go and see what we can do in Simulink. So this is the overview of uh, representation of our incubator inside the Simulink. As you can see, we have around four subsystems that I'm going to explain to you. We have two, two control loops, one for uh, the temperature and one for humidity, and uh, two reservoirs. Of course, they, they're one because they both represent the environment, but uh, we, we don't have the circulation of the air, so I put it in the different uh, uh, ports. And one thing I, uh, I would like to mention here is that we don't have enough information for run this simulation based on the things I said to you till now because we don't know, for example, what should be the uh, power of the heater, uh, how much watts do we need, how much water should should add to the environment, and for example, uh, what is the motor we, we should use as our fan here that provides this M dot here. And simulation here helps us because we can actually uh, implement our system and uh, adjust our parameters to see what are the desired selections and what is good for our system, what is upper bound, what is lower bound. And etc. So uh, first, I would like to talk about this uh, block here, which is our main system. It has 
these ports so let's just double click on it and I will uh, explain you the details it ha it could have up to four ports for uh, exchanging heat, uh, energy and material it has the H port which represents our thermal of this uh, chamber uh, heat transfer and all these matters go through the port H we have the S port which is optional which we have we could actually directly uh, add or remove uh, water to the chamber we have this W port which we don't use because it's just the rate of con condensation which we don't have here and finally the sensor port the F port which uh, physical signal port reporting moist air volume measurements so we can use it in our control loops and see how we can actually control our uh, parameters and here are the setups I would briefly talk about first we have the chamber volume as we calculated before it's around uh, uh, 10,000 cubic centimeter which is 10 liter and we have the area of the uh, ports it's constant 15 uh, cube uh, square centimeter for all all uh, duct ducts we have in the system uh, and we need to initiate some uh, properties of our chamber which like temperature and relative humidity we consider that our environment has a relative humidity of uh, 30 percent and the temperature of 25 around 25 degrees celsius which around uh, 293 kelvins so that's it for this block now let's take a look at our air circulation system here it's pretty simple thing we have two reservoirs uh, they're both environment and air uh, enter here and exits here this is our blower controlled mass volume uh, controlled mass flow rate source we just need to control this m port which provides the m dot just like let's take a look at the m dot subsystem we have a step function with the final value of this amount which is the uh, rate of uh, mass of the air we are going to uh, blow into the chamber each second so it's basically kilogram per second and we have this blower delay we consider it has delay around one second because it's like one over t is plus one and t is one so we have this m dot and the air flows inside the chamber and goes out by the way this here is solver configuration all physical simulation inside simulink needs this block so don't forget to use it and now let's talk about our first control loop which is the thermal control loop i am selecting here we have our set point here for uh, 37.5 degrees celsius but here is in kelvins in simulink we have two uh, main streams of heat one from outside environment through uh, walls with convection and conduction and another uh, in the inner side of the chamber with our heater and the convection so let's take a look at this uh, this first stream we have our temperature source here with at the environment temperature and we have this thermal resistance we have two convections on the inside and the outside and we have two half of the glass each part separately for the conduction uh, in inside and outside 
both has the two millimeter uh, thick thickness of two millimeter and at the middle we have the glass thermal mass itself because the glass also has its capacity thermal capacity is uh, temperature could also increase or decrease depends on the situation so this is the thermal model of the uh, chamber here and next all we need to control here is the this guy here we need to control uh, the amount of the power the uh, heater should pr provide so we have the desired temperature here so we have our feedback loop here and the set point here is the control block I'm going to show you uh, what is inside this in just a second first I need to mention that here what we are doing we are uh, converting our physical signal to the simulink signal abstract simulink signal and doing it back so we can uh, have our control system in simulink so let's take a look at our heater control subsystem so here we calculate the dif difference between our feedback and set point so this is our error signal it goes to our controller and goes to our model of the heater with uh, 10 seconds of the delay and finally we have the gain and it's actually the power the heater should provide us for uh, desired temperature so why we choose why we choose this pi controller the first natural use uh, we, which is uh, comes to mind is we should use the uh, relay or bank bank controller because it's pretty simple to implement we could have simply just put a thermostat there and do the job for us but as I do some research, it appears that temperature is really important factor to our case, and we don't want fluctuations in it in, in the temperature. So we need to control it precisely. And why why uh, we wouldn't use PID controller because the D factor uh, almost always. Uh, amplifies our noise so if we are not uh, have some force to use the D factor we are not going to use it the PI controller works perfectly fine and I use this uh, PID tune of the MATLAB itself to find its uh, coefficients so this is the loop for the temperature control and uh, I will run the simulation and I will show you what are the what are the results so here I just want to uh, introduce the elements and how the things work so now let's take a look at the left hand side uh, of this simulation which are the control loop for the uh, humidity which is uh, like our uh, thermal control loop with some differences I'm going to mention here first is that our set point is going to change here for the first 18 days versus the last three days and also our actuator we can't assume to be continuous because uh, for the thermal case it's pretty natural to assume that it's continuous because we can simply control it through the current passing through the coils but here I think that uh, it's more realistic that we consider it as a, a discrete actuator which can be has two states just on and off in on a state it will uh, consistently it sprays water inside the chamber and in, off, in the office state it just turn off so we can't actually control the flow of the water 
maybe we 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 can uh, control it by it, but uh, we don't have to because uh, if, as I mentioned before, we have a wider range of humidity that is acceptable for us, so it's okay to have some tolerances here. So we don't need to be complicated, and we are not going to be complicated here. So let's take a look at the con controller. We have uh, our relay here, which uh, play the role of our uh, bank bank controller. We have five percent of tolerance, and here is the the gain of the control loop. We have this is the mass of the water. It's going to spray each time it's on and here the model of the spray with one second of uh, time constant and that's it we have our control loop for humidity just like this we have our actuator our controller and our feedback loop and now actually let's run our simulation and see what are the results so we have simulation for 3600 seconds so it's basically one hour one hour of these 21 days but it's just same because the transient uh state just important for us here just let's run it and see what are the results so well, first let, let's take a look at temperature as you can see we we achieve to uh, perfectly control our uh, temperature here after around uh, six uh, ten minutes it's around 10 minutes after about 10 minutes we have our desired temperature here and some we have some overshoot here but which is not really important in our case we just have 21 days of this temperature just 10 minutes is just nothing compared to 21 days and uh, as you can see the pa controller works perfectly fine and here i want to mention something that i uh, said before as something we don't know and we can extract from our simulations here we can we, we don't know actually what's the power we need to use here to provide our desired temperature so what we can do is easily add a scope let's me just add a scope here and just connect it to the output of our controller and run it again so let's take a look here so here is just the amount of power in watts that we need to provide from our heater so that the temperature should uh, act like, just like we saw earlier so from this simulation we can know that we need some heater with working uh, power of 80 watts and upper bound of around 120 so this is really good information that we extract from our simulation because at, at the first i had no idea about the uh, power that we are going to need to provide this uh, temperature and it's pretty uh, useful to know here and here our simulation is for the te uh, temperature is completed here now let's take a look at our humidity control loop we have our scope here let's just open it here is the as we expected we have this uh, periodically behavior of our outcome based on the relay control we choose earlier and we have this upper bound and lower bound of 5% around uh, this 70% we set here 
so it's perfectly fine and works very well and in one hour we have around 15 to 16 uh, uh, turn on points which is fine I think we should see the specification of the our, our actuator but I think it's not really that much in one hour so it's okay we have achieved our goal here but I want to mention something really uh, important and beautiful here. Let's take a look at this block here. What we are adding here is vapor water. And we assume that we add vapor water. And let's see what are the options. We can actually use liquid or vapor. If we use uh, liquid, let's see what will happen. I will apply this and OK. And let's run the simulation again. As you can, so let's see our uh, humidity here. As you can see, the humidity is just like the earlier case with some differences, but it's uh, in general it's okay. It's something like we've seen earlier. But let's take a look at our temperature. As you can see, we have these guys here, and as you can guess, yet is because liquid water to become the vapor, it consumes energy from its environment. So we basically uh, each time we turn on our uh, actuator to spray some water in the environment, we we are going to decrease our temperature from environment so uh, I assume that we are going to have sprayed it really uh, small particles we can actually uh, assume that it's vapor so I wanted to say that this is some important details you should consider it when you're going to do it and that's it we reached the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it i will put the github link to this project in the description and see you around